goes right in there. And having a good sniff around, the Monday Scrum. Yes, welcome back to the Monday Scrum. Plenty to talk about Adam Peacock alongside Brent Reid from the Daily Telegraph. Hello, Reedy. mate. How are you? Great. Great to be here. We're back in a uh, the radio studio, which means you and Woodsy are basically uh, sitting on each other's that's laps. That's the one downside of this studio. <laughs> How are you, Woodsy? you set off here, mate. <laughs> I'm going good until I have to sit here next to this gibber. <laughs> Derek, please. Derek. Burger. Burger. You're a okay. burger. burger. And near the door, <laughs> in his favourite position, James Graham. <laughs> Just Jimmy. Just How are you, mate? Oh, man, I'm doing... Very well. Yes. Very well. What a what a week of football or a weekend. Mm. Like Thursday night's game was one of the greatest club games you're ever going to witness. Yes. You could look at the scoreline and go, oh, defense was soft. It was amazing. Mm. And look, there's that much happened. It's not even on the rundown. No, exactly. Exactly. What, what, what a weekend. Um, there's, there's stories about footy. There's stories about blokes who can't play footy next weekend because they're feral casualty ward. And there's stories around footy as well. And where do you reckon we're going to start? We're going to start with nothing of the footy. We're going to start with the borough. Souths and the <laughs> wider issues at play as we sit here right now. Brent Reid, mm. what's going on with this joint? Well, I mean, uh, three weeks ago, I think we all thought JD had three weeks to save his job, basically. Mm. They've turned around since then. They won one, one, got belt smashed on the weekend. Um, and he's an all sorts, Jason, Jason Demetrio. And I don't even know if a win this weekend can save him, to be honest. Mm. Um, it's a really difficult game for them. And um, they're going to be. Has outs- the owner got involved? Well, I don't, I don't think Russ has yet. If you look at on, on Russell's um, Twitter account today, he's actually celebrating his 60th birthday. Okay. And according to him, he was about to have a sauna and a game of tennis. And then an early night. So he didn't mention. Do you do your research? Well, it's on Twitter. He put it out to the world. (laughs) In between speaking Italian, it was a very impressive uh, tweet, to be fair, from Russ. So at the moment, I don't think he's involved on that level, but nothing will happen at South without Russell Crowe. We Mm. saw that last year with Sam Burgess and what happened there. Russell Crowe was involved in that. No decision on JD, Jason Dimitro were made without Russell Crowe having some form of involvement. Where Where does it lead, guys? Jimmy? In all seriousness, it's hard for Woodsy to talk about another club, but we'll get your take in a minute. But in a wider sense, Jimmy? Yeah, look, um, this situation, um, it's hard to see. Well, the only way Jason Dimitri keeps his job is results. Hmm. And if he wins on the weekend, he's going to need to win the following weekend and probably the following weekend after that. And, you know, um, then we reassess and... Um, South need to make finals mm. somehow uh, for him to, to, to him to have any chance of um, maintaining his job. Now, <clears throat> I, I've I've looked at this and spoke about this at length um, on a number of different um, mediums uh, and shows. I think if you're South Sydney, you 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 look back to 12 months ago and realise we were the best team in the comp. We were flying mm. top of the table. You know, l- looking like genuine premiership favourites. So it's not, they don't have to travel that far back, but in the in the absolute immediate, they have been so poor. They lack respect for the football. They're ill-disciplined. I guess when you're looking for, when, thinking back to my time in, in, in professional sport and in situations like this, it's it, the good old honesty session can have some hard and home truths. I don't know if they've already done that. Like the perfect um, timing for that for me would have been before the Roosters game. Mm. But maybe, you know, they, they dust themselves down. They go and do the review in the pub and get that Dutch courage and tell each other what everyone's doing wrong and what they need to do right. And don't take it personally. And you go out there and, you put in a performance against the Sharks, you get the crowd behind you, like rally the crowd to get there. I said this before that Souths have had um, some very difficult times over the years when 40 or thousand people that marched. Mm. They win the grand final in 14 and they were there in droves and they all paraded and good on them and they celebrated like they should. As a supporter, you need to hear your voice and Souths fans do travel and they, they do support. They need to get there on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Woodsy, what do you say with this footy team at the moment? No, just in general, you're just watching them. Like, there's so much noise at the moment at, at South Sydney. Uh, I've been in situations before, you know, when I was at the Tigers. Um, 
for me, I think they're just delaying the inevitable. It's it's the time. If he wins this week, he pushes it back another week. You know, they've got a tough draw. They've got Cronulla. I think they've also got the Storm to come up against. I think the sooner they come up with the decision, the less noise has been made. It sounds like that they've already going to go with Hornby as assistant coach. Um, but Jimmy just said it. It's the discipline on the field. It's letting players get away with things that, you know, like just little things like watching Latrell, just that spear tackle. That's just not a good look after an error. The play stopped, and you go in with a tackle. There was no need for it. I know Toe Harris sort of didn't help it. He, he looked like he jumped with it as well. But don't put yourself in a situation and, and look up and, you know, look around. Mate, you're the one that's creating it. Mm. Not specifically just the troll. There's other players doing things. But the coach needs to get down and say, no, we're not having that. You know, the leaders of the group, this is what people are talking about. We need to stand as a group and let not give them any ammo on us. You know, and just little things like that, the the forearm to the throat, you know. Sean Johnson's not a aggressive defender. You, there's no need to raise your elbow the way he raised it, you know, and, and it's it, it's happening too too often. Yeah. Are, are they pulling him into line? Like, what's happening at the club at the moment? Well, let's have a quick listen to what was said after the game by coach and captain about those in, incidents with Luttrell. They're both just stupid things, you know. They're just... Just got to be better. Simple as that. It's not something for me to talk about now. As a group, we'll be honest as we do every week and uh, have a look at the things we need to be better at. But there's some key there are moments I'm talking about as well. You know, giving the ball over when we've got the ball is not what we want to be doing. But there's several of those moments that too many blokes are coming up with. Cam, do you have to chat with him as captain? Because obviously he's trying to come up with a big play to inspire the team, but he is crossing that line a bit too much. Do you chat with him as the leader of this team? Um, Latrell, he, he's pretty. He's got. Some good self-reflection, and he knows he normally knows what he needs to change before anyone tells him. So, but yeah, passing by conversations won't hurt. So, um, we're pretty fresh after the game now, but something to think about over the weekend. I think. I think even those close to Latrell acknowledged the weekend wasn't good enough. I've mm-hmm. spoken to some people who are close to Latrell today, um, and even they say. Look, they've defended him in the past, but even they found it hard to defend that performance on the weekend. Mm. And I think their view is that um, it sounds like the club's going to make him hang around. They're going to train him during those three weeks because generally he gets... Yeah, but so really, go back that's to the Tari, problem. Right? So you should, like, because it doesn't matter who you that. are in the team. Yeah, I know. And that's what they're going to do this yeah, time. So they should. You, right? They should never have had a and chat about it. I think even people who are in his camp acknowledge the best thing for him right now is to try. He's not. It's not like he's unfit, Latrell. He's in some of the best shape of his career at the moment. Mm. If you look at the t- testing they've done at South, it's obviously a mental problem for him at the moment. Uh, he's been through a lot early in the year, a lot of criticism. Obviously, there was always a lot of focus on him, and it looked at the at the weekend lo- like he looked disinterested. And even as I said, those close to him acknowledge he looked disinterested. So he needs to spend the next three weeks just working out what he wants. Well, I was sitting sideline actually, um, and. Wanted to go down there and have a listen. Thank Charlie Watt and the uh, the access given with the Triple M accreditation, despite a few tenuous moments earlier in the season after an interview in particular. But listening and watching that team go about their business. So previous times, the odd occasion of sat on the sideline, you hear someone like Tommy Turbo playing fullback or Teddy playing fullback. It's constant just barking. He's screaming like a banshee throughout the defensive set. Latrell once every two, three tackles, yelling just the odd thing to point over there. A ball goes down. You see the body language. You can see it from the commentary box, Jimmy, that body language is like everyone just looking around, okay, what am I going to do next? No. I don't know. He needs to to rediscover his love of the game. It feels like he's lost a bit of his love of the game. But it it, it feels like there's a few in South like that. It's like, oh, the the weight of my world is on me because we've just dropped the ball. That's what I was going to say. I mean, look – for, for Sal Sydney, L- Luttrell is one of a number of issues and one of a number of players that are not playing anywhere near their potential. I think they know that. Um, again, I think looking at the situation... Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> again, lo- again, still again, digesting again, yeah. Yeah, again, looking at the situation, <laughs> you, you think, okay, let, let's look within that group. Um, and like I said, 12 months ago, they are leading the competition and one of the premiership favourites coming into this will... They don't fix it and fix it now. Mm. These opportunities pass you by. Cody Walker, 34. Damien Cook, 32. You're not going to get chances. No. Your chances are limited. And that's why like, they bought Jack White, wasn't it? Because like, it's about now. Yeah. Like, it's it's about now. So if they're in this window now, if they've got opportunity now, you know, mm. it's, it's not going to be around forever. So you, you ought to make a decision. If, you, if you're those two players, yeah. 
give it a red hot crack because yeah. you'll regret that and you'll look back and you'll be yeah. like what 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 were we doing like pe- like a pe- what were we doing not focusing what were we doing mm. you know uh, not be like why why did i hold back what why did i not be honest why mm. did i miss that opportunity to say something i should have said or uh, pl- yeah i'll get you, you, letting you, it you drift know. Yeah, yeah, just letting it drift. Oh, I'll just bottle it. this one up. I, yeah. I don't need to concern myself. I think myself. they've spoken, Jimmy. Though, I, well, mean, I think they've sat in rooms and looked at each other and and pointed fingers. And you and, know what, Reed? I think they still haven't addressed what's happened last year. You know that the fallout because the one player that wasn't there last year and watching him play this year, Jack Whiten, he's been outstanding. Like his energy, mm. he's coming. You on say the board. amongst the players, yeah, though, would reckon, he? Well, then you listen to Cameron Murray talk. Then he sounded so flat, mm. and he's the leader of the group. He's got to get the blokes up. He looks like he's lost for words at the moment. Yeah. Re- Re- Latrell reflects on it. Are you talking to him about it or are you just letting Latrell reflect on himself and hoping he knows what he's done wrong? As a leader of the group, you need to you need to find what is happening and what's wrong. And that's something that JD and Cameron have to do together. Well, may- maybe maybe it's on Cookie and Walker, the leaders, to to look everyone in that in that room in the eye and say are you are you going to you going to let me go out like this? Mm. Like if what is Walker going to let them go out like let let his teammates be remembered for this. Mm. Like, is that is this, is this what you want for me and Cookie? Does may, look- may, maybe that message will drill home because I know if I'm a young player in that dressing room, or if I'm one of those players that are drift, if I'm drifting, yeah, He's I'm dri- I'm drifting in and out of um, form and not focusing, or I'm 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 putting it in the too hard basket, or I'm leaning on an excuse, or I'm letting Latrell take the fall. You know, it's about time. I think it's those two and Tom. That's leaving, you know, the last of the generation. They look at everyone and go, "You gonna? You, is this what you want to do to us?" Yeah, Tom Burgess actually spring to mind when he came back on. He had so much energy. He was trying to actually. He was leading a kick chase. I think there was one set where he led a kick chase. He sprinted back. He was first out of line and looked to put a shot on. Missed it. Sprinted back. And then was involved in the and, next. And tackle. that's what you want to see from your leaders: it's a commitment. And you know, like Jimmy said. It's definitely Tommy's last year this year. He's going out, obviously yep. going to Super League. You know, Cookie, um, Cody Walker said he still wants to play and said his body feels fresh. But we're not seeing, you know, the same Cody Walker from 18 months ago. No. It, you know, you come into a tough situation. All the stuff that happened last year. So what, when Sammy Burgess walks out, you know, they, they take JD's side and, and, you know, obviously the other the other players are in the team. It must be right because nothing's changed since Sammy's left. Mm. The culture must have stayed the same. It's interesting what they do, though, Adam. Like, if you get rid of Jason, but, but, mm. like Ben Hornby's there already. But, but the talk yeah. is they want well, to get nothing Bennett. Will change. Nothing. The talk What's is they want to get change? Bennett and Burgess back. Yeah, but you well, can't if, get better now. You no, can't, he's in the middle of a coaching yeah, but, job. I'm but, but, saying if you change it but now. But why would you bring Burgess back if he, if he left and nothing's changed? Like Because he'll cha- you, well, you not, he's not, change. He, he's not going to be able to come back. It, and That's what I mean. He's He'll, seven games into think, his coaching He won't career. be able to come out now, but at the end of the year, potentially. No, Jimmy. the Warrington said they would not release yeah, him. Yeah, I know. Clubs yeah. say That's that, though, Woodsy, but clubs say that. So you know, two two years. He's got another year there. Yeah, clubs, you know Sammy well, Jimmy. Would he want to do that apprenticeship work. over there for two years at Warrington? Uh, with all due respect to Warrington calling it an apprenticeship, but you know what I mean? He he wants to end up back in the NRL one day as Yeah, a of coach. course. I, I I don't think you need to be um, Einstein to figure that one out, hmm. that he wants to come back and coach in the yeah. NRL. But he can well, serve his two years, and if Wayne does a two, yeah. three year deal, for example, he just comes back after one year and works under Wayne for two. Yeah, I, so he serves see, his two years over there. The it, issue is now. That's it, what I'm it, saying. It, 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 it's hard because Sam's incredibly uh, determined, motivated, and believes he can achieve w- whatever is put in front of him. I.e., he could walk in tomorrow at South and turn it around. But he's also um, um, incredibly tactile as well. Mm. Like he he know he he can plan and formulate and see and maybe know that maybe he's assessing it and go oh, I'm going to leave it alone and I'll go in two years time. So like, I'm, has I'm, he I'm, and get let it yeah yeah yeah. It. Let 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 someone else do some dirty work. Yeah. Get ch- turn over players. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Why? Like to me, it looks a no brainer. Wayne you Bennett. Know the other thing about he's like, leaving the Dolphins. Yeah. But you know the funny thing is, like, it's not like South has got a terrible roster. They've got a good squad no. there. Hmm. You know, you look at other sides, like poor old Gold Coast Titans. Like, you know, you compare them to those two, and they're on the same points. You know, I reckon they're South's. Um, oh yeah, but South don't 
be confused with this south and bottom of the table. They've got to win. Gold Coast don't. Yeah, I know, I know that, but they're still the same. And look at the, the teams that the South have played as well. Well, they've played the big guns yeah. already to start the season. Could, could Sunny come back and work with Latrell, given all the water that's gone under the bridge? I mean, I think he could. What I, about the boss? But I'm just saying. Blake Solly. Oh, Blake, could, Blake could find a way to work with them. They've known each other for a long time. I'd imagine... They'd have to find a way through it. I mean, Wayne, you Wayne can rekindle, you can rekindle right? relationship. You can't. You can. well, mm. Woodsy and I have been on and off for years. Yeah, mm. we've never been on. <laughs> mm. But mm. Does, does that, what about the ownership come down to Blake Solly? He's the one that's employed all these people and wanted to keep them. Well, well not, not, it's not just Blake. Yeah, you know, The board made the decision. Yeah. And, I was asking and, and Russell made the decision to bring in um, Wayne and have a succession plan in yep. place. It wasn't just a Blake decision. So CEOs, so, oh, there's certain CEOs that have a greater sway with the football things, but generally speaking, NRL clubs these days, CEOs are mainly focused on the commercial side. Well, no, and the no, he, side. he's involved in that aspect of well, things. Like he would, have, he would have made a recommendation, yeah. but the board's yeah. still got a. That's Ratified. pretty hands on. Just board. I mean, you got Russell Crowe. They or, do have a head of footy. Uh, head of football. Who's that? Brock Schaefer's head of footy. Never heard of him. He's very good. Is very he? good operator. Yeah. I think I've actually seen him at games. Yeah, yeah very good operator. He's quite close to JD actually. But he's a really good operator. How's he going to feel in a week or two, Tom? Oh, yeah. I think you've got to be realistic, right? Um, And I think everyone at that club is realistic at the moment. It's not working. And at some point, if it's not working, you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision. Uh, But I guess, do you you, you suck JD? If you do suck JD, like... There's no contingent plan. Hornby takes over. Now, obviously, you can't plan for this. This is manifesting in front of their eyes. But what, what, what would change... That, that's well, a long question. time for the class to be with the replacement teacher. Yeah, it's a good question because I, Ben's part of the the system at the moment. So I, I don't know. If, you're right. I, I, maybe maybe you say to JD, you can stay the year, you can finish the year off and see the year out. Mm. I, I don't I don't know how they ha- they'll handle that situation because they can't get Wayne now. There's been talk about Craig Bellamy as well as the other one, but Craig's he Craig Bellamy well, Craig, he won't leave well, Melbourne. Craig's, Craig, Craig's a contract in Melbourne. Long term deal. That's what I say. He'd never and leave. Even though he hasn't announced he's going to coach next year, I expect the next week he will announce. He's it going is to about coach that time. Yeah. Read his mail. Wait he's going to coach again <laughs> yes. uh, in Melbourne. He's a genius. Yes. Or just no in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. And even if he da- even if he decides not For to, how long? <laughs> well, he just do it year by year. But even if he decides not to, good on him. <laughs> he becomes like a coach do, do consultant. Do you do anyway. you sort him out because you need read his mail? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, Matt Craig, can you do me a favour? Just only ever do Mate, one year deals. Every week for yeah. about five weeks. Just do one year deals. He keeps saying next week. <laughs> well, that's, that's mail. Week. That's mail for week. you. I think Craig, it'll happen next week. Craig Bellamy will know next week what he's going to do. There's your mail. No, I think Craig's going to go around and get a Melbourne. So, I mean, that was a that was a, a long long shot anyway, right? So, Craig so, was never going to leave Melbourne. So you're but, basically saying that they're not making a decision yet because they don't know what Wayne's doing yet. Well, so, no, I, I, they could make a decision um, now and then work on Wayne. Yeah, but. I, I just think they want to wait. They've got the buy after Do you think this that week. phone so call's already happened? You wait till next week. Do you think that I'm phone sure call's... I'm sure he's been sounded out, yeah. But I'm what, sure he's been sat- sounded out. What, what do you mean you by sound? What? Can you explain sounded out? I'm sure someone's made a call to Wayne. If not, someone from South, I'm sure. Because what Wayne does, Wayne doesn't have an agent, right? So doesn't. Wayne, no, oh, he, he doesn't, doesn't have, have an agent. A, like a manager or no. an agent? So he's just got a do, landline to his house. What he does is, generally he has agents hammering him, saying, or offering him to clubs. What what occasionally happens is an agent will go to a club and they'll say, I can get you Wayne Bennett. Do you want Wayne? And the club will go, yeah, we mind talking to Wayne. So the agent will go back to Wayne and go, hey, Wayne, I've got this lined up for you. What do you think? And Wayne will make a decision about whether he wants to go with that agent or go with that club or not, which happens frequently. So that's why occasionally you hear Wayne's name being bandied about with certain clubs. Mm. But Wayne goes, I don't know anything about it. That's because agents go out and do it Mm. sort of on his behalf, occasionally without his knowledge, to try and generate. And then they go back to Wayne and say, because Wayne's a free agent. He just goes with... Whoever and then calls the, the newspaper. The, the agent then calls the newspaper. <laughs> I've got a Sometimes the clubs call the newspaper. <laughs> so I'd imagine in some way Wayne's been sounded mm. out, whether it's an agent ringing him or a, a South, someone from South or a line to South potentially ringing him. Do, do you know <laughs> what you're you you thinking in all this? What? Like, if, you know, part of me, and I, I know JD wouldn't do this. Because you're thinking, I'll, I'll change it. I, it might be best just walking away, you know, yeah. and you, save his coaching what career. By, what do you achieve by well, that, though, Jimmy? You know what I mean? You walk, When you walk away. No, well, not do, just say uh, my position become untenable. I know I'm a good coach, but I, I, it's my, like, you, you, maybe you get, I think you get a bit of credibility. Mm. 
But as a player, would you walk away without having a contract signed for your next club, or is it different? Different. The other issue is if different. you because with coaches, he did that immediately, yeah. didn't he? Because the furniture. I was going to say the other <laughs> the issue bunnings. is if you walk away, <laughs> the plastic chairs. Are you walking away without a payout? Because he's got a nine month payout clause. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So if you walk pushed. away, you well, sort of, make it mutual with the club. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, well, that's probably, that's what they'll do in the end. Right, mm. eventually when they part ways. So, but what happens if, if he wins f- four in a row? Do they look at re-signing him then? Well, is he? Gonna, he's not. Do you think he's? I don't think he's going to get that long. Yeah, no. I don't. Yeah, so, we'll wait and, and see. And they're not going to win four in a row. They, they got. Well, they got Cronulla. They got this Cronulla week. They'll by. They'll beat the bye. Then they got the. Then they got Penrith and Melbourne. Yeah. The next two weeks after well, that. I think Cronulla's the, the toughest task so far, mate. They're, they're going good. And Penrith right. and Melbourne. No, we'll get, they got to get there. He's got to get there first. Yeah, yeah, Cronulla, yeah, yeah. mate. Yeah. Wait and see. Uh, time for this. Now. What the what? WTF moment. Woodsy, going to you first. Let's oh, get boys. some manly into this little Monday so scrum. I was, um, obviously didn't play first grade in the weekend, but I was sitting in the grandstand, pretty yeah. much in, in right in line with something that happened. Um, you know, I think it was Dylan Edwards went for a long cutout pass. Mm. Tommy Talau goes to catch it, <laughs> drops right in front of him. <laughs> behind and, him? No, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, behind him. Um, and I've watched, I think it was Toddy Smith, the referee. Yeah. He's gone to put the whistle in the mouth, then pulled it back and just kept watching Tolu Kula run. And I'm just going, what the? F-? I couldn't believe it. And we got a try out of it. How good. It went back, though. It's so good when it's on your side. If I was like, <laughs> oh, you're filthy. Oh, mate, if I'm, pen- if I'm in Penrith, because that was a big moment in the game. Yeah. It, it ch- completely changed the game. We, instead of going up by, you know, sort of giving Penrith another shot at our line well, down by two, yeah. we go up by eight. So. It's walk off material. Like. <laughs> right. mate, imagine right. it happen- Jimmy, imagine it happened to you. It, it, uh, it, it, Jimmy, it's the close. Out, maybe. The it's very close. To just it was going lads, up. Right, lads, Jimmy. <laughs> we're, we're done. We're walking. <laughs> like, and we're not coming out of the dressing room. Room before that try is chalked <laughs> off. Seriously, in the Fair Income Department, what was the bunker doing? I don't know. I don't know. Brown it was funny was... listening to Corey Parker, though, explain the fact that, yeah, it looked like it went back, but it's a knock on. I'm like, Corey, you've just contradicted yourself. But well, I, I understand. Like, every time this, the ball goes like well, that. You know what? Down, Everyone's <laughs> so scared to make a decision. Yeah. So. The, the referee doesn't want to make a decision in case he gets it wrong. Yeah. He's fearful of getting the decision wrong. So he goes to blow the whistle and then he goes, oh, well, I'll just wait and see what happens. The best thing for Cole or what he should have done uh-huh. is got tackled yeah. and not scored the try. That's what I was saying, Jimmy. He should not have scored the, the, he the real, real smart players <laughs> because the odds of that not getting choked off are so minimal. But because the referee said play on, he's waiting for him to score. Yeah. For the, and then he's... He, he's um, you know, taking no responsibility. Yeah, yeah. I'll, put, I'll send it to the bunker. So the referee isn't at fault. It's the bunker at fault. So he doesn't want to make a decision. I'm going yeah. to put the decision on the bunker. Cola should have got tackled. Then you can't go back and look yeah. at that. Clever. That's what smart, clever players do. Clever. But it did go. End. And then the bunker. Because they <laughs> they go with the rhetoric of, well, it's been sent up a try. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is... Because also, like, referees seem fearful of incidences like that going... I'm going to send this up as a try. They don't. They don't send things up anymore as a try. They award the try, knowing mm. it's going to be checked. Wait, Sometimes yeah. they award no try, but he should have just sent it up as an as a no try. He just yeah. award. It was crazy. I was I saying, get tackled, it. get tackled. Because if yeah. if Lua laid in the ruck and tried to say, "I want to go captain's challenge," you can't do that anymore. He gets straight ten. Well, well, also if Lua tackles him. And it's play on. It's There's game. probably no... The, Cola probably has to play the ball to himself because everyone just stood on the try line waiting for it to get Could called back it? anyway. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> Reed, you, Graham Honestly, has he said anything? He's on know. right now. He's on right now. Right. Right. You, know, you know that teaches you, boys? What? Play to the whistle. Play to yeah. the whistle. Play to the whistle. Exactly. Clever. No, it doesn't. It doesn't teach you that. <laughs> yes, it does. It doesn't teach you, to walk you that. Off just of the say shit it teaches us that there's no matter what, there's some idiots out there that are shit. Can't make a decision. And... Those people should be held accountable. What was your WTF, James? Oh, look, talking about walk-offs, I was, mm. was going to go with Fenerbahce. Uh, they fielded uh, an under-19 team uh, in the Turkish Cup final. I think they played a minute and then they actually walked off. What? What's happened there? Uh, some, they wanted to get their game delayed. and Oh, that's Turkey and their soccer things for you. But uh, <laughs> on, all, all, on all things referees, my WTF moment. Of all the injuries, mm. we even had a touchy... 
Yes. Pull the calf. You're Ping kidding. The calf. Re- replacement touchy. On the oh heavy ten at Newcastle. Yeah. Me. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't blame him. That track was shocking. <laughs> no, but the track, it's not a quick track. It's a slow track. Back how, pace, Jimmy. how can you tear your car off yeah. when you're running in a mud bath? You, mate, Uneven ground. Heavy ground. He wasn't wearing, he wasn't wearing the Nikes. That's yeah, why. No. Well, he's got to warm up better. Like, if, if, if we've got to, you know, we, we talk about, like, you know, planning, preparing for the worst. Mm. What if another touch you went down? Yeah, the ref went down. What are we going to yeah. do then? It'd be one of the greatest Get moments in rugby league. Something like the crowd. Yeah. Oh. Wouldn't that be good? Did, did you ever do that as a kid when you were like, you know, if you were a kid, you think, imagine if loads of players go down, the coach <laughs> needs fine. a player and they'll pick me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was my WTF moment. Really? I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Manly, Brookie as well. No, Nathan no. Brown on Saturday night. Off the back. His fence. kickoff returns. And look, he was I, the best. I think kickoffs will eventually be banned. Get lost, Reed. No, <laughs> no, no I not think this week. So do you, get away. Do you, do you, on Sunday. Do you, do you, you should want, have heard the crowd at Brookie, mate. They do, you were, want, oh, do, you, do you want them to be banned I, or you look, think they should? I, I, no, I, sorry, don't, sorry, I don't even. Do you want them to be banned or do you think they will? I think they both, will. Both. I think but they will. But do you want them to? I, I don't. I'm Reedy, not, when I'm not fussed, Reedy, but I will say. You're not fussed. When you were sitting in your chair. How exciting was it? It was what? unbelievable. You should have heard the crowd of Brookie. He brought the crowd into but the game. But every time he ran in and got smashed into that defensive line, smashed. I thought to myself, a couple of times he got... There was Leo Leo Henry, you got Henry. You thought what? I, I couldn't do that. I'm glad someone else is. <laughs> I'm paying my money to sort to do something I can't every do. Every time I watch rugby league. I thought to myself at some point... He lifted gonna, Manly with those carries, mate. He lifted Manly. Well, yeah. I'm with you. It was amazing. But I'm just saying, I think it was further proof... Of why at some point no, he will be banned. Get away. What was it? he literally? They said it's he was. A contact sport they said reading. he was coming off the back fence. Was he? Was yeah, because it's only like five, ten. Yeah. Minutes so he was back. literally. Yeah, he the was fence. the big source. He was wound it's up. Unbelievable. He, I swear to God, he changed the game. Was he? I sent you a message. I yeah. swear to God, he went after James Fisher Harris. Yes, the best. He, did, he went after he? the big dog. He went yeah. and tried see the tap to run. Absolutely yeah. smashing. Fisher Harris had a tap run. He went flying. And James Fisher Harris, you don't see us that often. He didn't want a bar of it. Were you on the sheds before the game? No, 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 it wasn't. In I the think shed. he did want to buy it. I thought you were the pump-up man. You, you no, might no, need to play him later in the year. That one. Oh, yeah. I, was I was wondering whether he'd uh, had he spoken during the week. No, at there, all? there's certain blokes that you just don't need to, eh, Jimmy? Like there's mm. blokes that need to be wound up, and there's blokes that you don't. And when you see Brownie in the sheds before a game, yes, he's one of those quiet guys. Who just keeps to himself. Okay, he's got his music on, and that's when you know he's what on. What about in the week leading up? Had he spoken all about? No, not at all. I just really? obviously you get challenged from Steve's. You know, yeah. he's the Golden Boot winner. Like, yeah. You know, and it was his first game back from injury. So yeah. we had uh, we had Mitch Pierce and Todd Carney in the building earlier today doing a podcast for listener, and um, Todd Carney brought up the fact that Wade Graham used to call blokes out, and also Josh Miller, when Mick yeah, Wayman went good. from Canberra to St George, apparently he said, "I'm going after him. I'm taking him down really? in this game." So that'd be fun. Wade used to call halfbacks out, not. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick one on Come my on. WTF before we get back to HIS. Uh, quick one. <laughs> a kid went for a walk on the Northern Beaches on Sunday, I think it was, uh, across Boonda Reserve, which is just this generic kind of soccer field in Narrabeen, and he disappeared. What? In the ground. In the ground? In sinkhole. Oh, no oh, way. No Two is he a okay? sink- sinkhole? It was only I'm because sure he yelled out. Is he okay, mate? <laughs> He's all right. I think I've played a Boonda Reserve. Yeah. Just behind one what of the goals. He probably scored a hat trick or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sick, two two metre sinkhole. Yeah, and it had to, it, it, basically, they couldn't didn't know what to do because they didn't want to tread around the sinkhole just because yeah. they go in as oh. well on top of the kid. Wow. In the end, a, um, a, a two metre copper was in the area. He came and then just laid down on the ground and reefed him up one-hander Jeez. like a big excavator. Like got him up. But well, they fixed yeah. the hole in the pitch more. No, they haven't, really. <laughs> and there might be more out there. So watch where you're playing your I'm weekend not playing warrior. I'm retired. Uh, uh, retired. HIAs, guys, dramas. Like the Sam McIntyre one, it stands out for everyone. And go back to the Good Friday game, mm. Jacob Preston as well with a broken jaw. Mm. But <laughs> Sam McIntyre was out. He was past Pluto before he hit the ground. And then he comes back out. There's how been does, a, there's how been does a it few happen? this year, I reckon, where the trainers have gone out. And you've seen the guy and you've thought, he's got to take him off. Yeah. And they've left them on. Well, they and don't it's want to take the doctor to They don't want to make a decision because they're so it's frightened. Like the bunker, Jimmy, or the yeah. referees. Well, right? it is. So they don't yeah. want, basically, a trainer will go uh, assess the player and they're so frightened of getting the call wrong, knowing they've got the safety net of the independent doctor. Mm. So they just go, well, if the guy's going to say he's all right, 
who am I to judge? Yeah. Uh, the coach will be up me for the rent if I mm. um, remove him from the field of play. Like that. That's that's what happened. This is some of the un- unintended consequences of bringing in an independent doctor yeah. where responsibility and the decision making is d- diminished. Isn't but there an independent doctor in our games? Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Watching no. on. Yeah. No. There, there's yeah, an independent there doctor there, yeah. Woodsy, but they, they make they have the power now to make the call. So they're in as a bunker, a, though, right? That power yeah. is being yeah. 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 So they have, they have the yeah. they have the power to make the yeah. call. They call whether it's cat one or cat two, which then just there's the a lot response more cat twos now and a lot less man. cat ones in the last yeah. few you, weeks. You can see some signs that are definitely cat ones, and when they come back, and I remember we did a game with you once. You on the sideline reading, you was like, "There's only a cat two and I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. Well, like was out. this was this was well. well that. Also, like, some of these the arguments between cat one and cat two, the fact that you can be a cat one pass. Yeah. Your HI, a HIA, well, well, that says the the test is not fit for purpose. And I've had a number of um, medical experts sort of suggest to me that the sideline test, the baseline test, it, it it's not fit for purpose anymore. And it's and it's very difficult with this issue of concussion. I, I understand. I, I I speak to a lot of people in this yeah, area, you've and, and, and fun, fund- fundamentally, anyway. we need greater awareness and education. Because the only way you can actually actually diagnose a concussion fundamentally is is or the best tool is honesty. Yeah, and you need honesty from the players. And, and Jimmy, I'm all different too. Like some hit yeah. you like ten minutes later, some hit you yeah. like an hour later. So, well, so Joseph Suoli, he in the um, Premiership game in the finals game last year, yeah. where no no independent doctor That's witnessed right. it, none of here, his own doctor didn't witness it. No trainer, no physio, no teammate, no opposition player. There was no clear signs. He gets into the dressing rooms at half time and goes, Doc. Uh, something's happened here. Yeah, I've been involved out. in yeah. this. And so it, it's great that this younger player has accepted responsibility and come forward and being honest and upfront, despite the fact that his team is playing a finals game yeah. and by admitting he has a concussion, will miss the following week. So it sort of suggests that some yeah. younger players are learning mm. and willing to be honest in, in the most extreme ex- circumstances. But uh, until you get that through to the players, this test can be passed, even though you're a cat one. I think I was reports that Tedesco knocked out, clearly cat one, passed his test. Well, that means it's not fit for purpose. Yeah. You shouldn't even do 100%. the test if it's a cat well, one. Well, you shouldn't really yeah. do the test, but the fa- fact you can pass it is Well, fun. it was funny the other day. We did the, the Good Friday clash when Preston had the broken jaw come back on the field. He was out. But... I think Shaq Mitchell stayed on, but then at half time he was getting yeah, blue yeah, vision, was, so they yeah. didn't bring him back on. Yeah, yeah, so did, yeah. They're all completely different. So I, I, I'm agree with you, Jimmy. I don't think what you the process you got to go through it's not correct. It, it well, need, sorry, when I say not fit for purpose, I should change that. Really, I say it needs to be looked at, and let's see if we can find a better sol- solution and a better process to catch more concussions. Exactly, because everyone has a different way of. Dealing with it as well, like you, Swahili one yeah. that you just mentioned, the kid from Penrith on the weekend, he was yep. clearly out. He Lim couldn't Henry, get up. Yeah. Like he, he oh, was, yeah. it was like he was being after last drinks, just shuffled out the door. And then he didn't want to go. He was like, "No, nah, I'm all right. I'm all right." But fair play to the Penrith trainer. He says, yeah. "No, nah, off you go, son. Yeah. You, you're out. You, I'm, yeah. I'm getting you off." So, so some can't self-regulate. Yeah. Some can, but until then, I'm with you, Jimmy. Like the, it, 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 it is. Surely, there's got to be a better way with all the scientific evidence behind what is and what isn't and what could be. Mouth well. guards, aren't they trolling mouth? Didn't they well, troll mouth guards? They, they have in rugby union. So basically, what that is is you know we it, we did a two gym yeah, in the preseason. I think the, the, I'm not the, sure the, what the results. So were of basically, it, what that does is really that catches some, but not all. So how those mouth guards work is there is a acceler accelerometer. I can't say that word. Innovative. <laughs> in the, yeah. the, the, there's a a chip in the mouth guard yep. that le, that uh, records the um the force generated. Yep. So what yeah. they've got, what they have, this system of if it's over say ten G's, I'm just making these numbers up as I go along. So it's, if it's over ten, it will buzz the computer live and go. Uh, purple number twelve has. Yeah. Uh, been involved, so, uh, yeah. it has a G-force over 10. They need to be removed for an assessment. Not necessarily confirming they've received a concussion. It's just gone over a threshold that yeah. the doctors say that if you get that much force through your body, you will need to be assessed. It's interesting because everyone has a different pain threshold, though. Yeah, 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 but yeah. Pain, pain threshold is, is different. different. Force. The, the force that's generated, they yeah, say, yeah. the yeah. likelihood of you receive a, a uh, sustaining a concussion at those G-force levels are higher than 
you know, a, a seven or an eight, significantly higher or high enough to uh, warrant a test. Reckon... It's only a test. It's not a removal. It's okay. a test. Just a test. Well, he doesn't wear a mouth guard. What's he going to do? Yeah, no. Well, they could mandate it. Why yeah. don't you wear a mouth guard? part of your uniform. I hey, tried to do it when I was younger and I couldn't talk properly in it. Yeah, couldn't. Couldn't how much I love talking. Have you got one on now? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well said, Reedy. <really. laughs> he walked into that. He absolutely walked into that. Hey, um, we're gonna have to, have to, have to, to yeah, he, he should be as well. We might have to separate these. Yeah, well yeah, done yeah. there. Reedy, you got me in the show. Yeah. I'm seeing him with a bigger grin on his face. I I got a rule that Origin, there's no point talking about it until the clocks go back. So the clocks have gone back, everyone. So what about this question? Give us a player who's rocketed in it. Not your, your Cam Murrays of the world or your DCEs or whatever like that. They're going to be there. Smokey. Just give us someone who's rocketed up that at the start of the season you were thought, oh, not so sure about origin. For me, someone like Wade Egan, for instance. Yeah. Even though he's got a great rep in the game, I reckon he's, he keeps on going up and up in everyone's estimation. He could be a, a smoky little chance for Madge McGuire yeah. come origin time. Yeah, it's not a bad shout. He was on my list here. Oh, you got a I list? I think of a Queenslander. No. Queensland. Oh, you're just picking stick. You don't pick like I mean, guys there's, there's obviously Dylan attention. Edwards, right? Mitch Kenny. Oh, he hasn't played. Yeah, I, 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 Mitch Kenny. But I'm trying to think of a Queensland. Are there any Queenslanders? I was thinking. Stop I don't care here. about. I don't care about Queensland. <laughs> um, I'll acquire two at my club. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's a good He's, one. And, and you know, I got one more. Um, Cameron McInnes from the Sharks. Oh, okay. New yeah. South Wales picking four hookers. Can't like imagine likes Cameron McInnes. No, he can play. Well, He's he can play a lock. Yeah, middle forward, and you need quick ruck speed in Origin. Good point. Taruva. Taruva. Okay. Can yeah. he play? What, how old was what he? About Davery? <laughs> yeah, where's he from? Is he from Maxville? <laughs> is he going to play for you, Mob? He's from, from Penrith. <laughs> he qualifies for New South Wales. Is okay. there a, I'm trying to think of a Queen. Is there any, are there any Queenslanders? I don't know, Reddy. You're the Queensland, any Queensland fan. Have you vaulted into contention? Oh, good. Well, they've gone backwards a bit. Oh, good. Yeah, they've gone backwards a bit. <laughs> There's a few injury concerns, bench. Queensland, do they not? Big Plus, Tino out. Underdogs. Joy Arrow. Joy Arrow. What about Bo Fermor? Well, they, they've been struggling a bit. Mm. Anyway, we'll be underdogs. That's fine. We, you know, as we always <laughs> or are. Or Mitch Barnett. Yes. And the Warriors. He's been really good. He's been very good. Yeah. yeah. New South Welshman, though. That's what I'm, so I said. I don't really care about Queensland. <laughs> he was outstanding. On the, you talk he's, of he's energy through the middle. For the last 18 he's months. He's been great, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah he's great a player. better player than I thought he was. Here we go. Read about it. Read about it. Read his mail. Ooh, oh, what about we should talk bolters for origin. Mm -hmm. This is the really left field bolter. Mm -hmm. uh, young Ethan Strange. Now, he's not going to make origin this year, right? But Cam Canberra's actually um, kicking off talks talks with him over a new deal. He was outstanding again last night, Ethan Strange. Been one, I think he's the early favourite for Dalian Rookie of the Year. Uh, he's got a year left in his deal. His dad's a coach at the Roosters, coaches the women's team. Sister plays too, doesn't she? His sister yeah. plays. So I think Cam was a bit fearful that his father might come and <laughs> roosters. coach him back to the Roosters because the Roosters, if you look at it, they're next year centres there, and he is. I think he's more of a he's more of a centre. He plays a bit of centre. Here he's also another year older yeah, too. They're a bit short, so uh, Canberra. Just, Everyone is. Yeah, Canberra just signed obviously <laughs> Matty Tomoko to a, a contract extension. Yeah. Uh, next <laughs> off the bat, Ethan Strange. So just on that game, how about with Para? Terrible. We like were Canberra were we very touch good. On that. You brushed that. Is that. I did oh, brush that. Coming back to that. A uh, Canberra going after that young half, the yes. Parramatta. Yes, Ethan Sanders. Yeah, Sanders. Yeah. They have. Well, they, they have. They were in talks with him. Then the NRL changed the rules. Uh, he wasn't allowed to talk to anyone until after round six. Round six is this weekend. I'd imagine next week Canberra will be on the phone to him straight away. Do they want him now, or they want? They him wanted next him. Year? They wanted him straight away. And my understanding is Parramatta said no. You can't have a release last year. Because if Mitchell Moses or Dylan Brown get injured, you're well, next. Well, he's not, is he? Well, they said to him, "You're next up," and those and Mitch has been injured and he's not playing. And now they don't want to play him because they don't want to develop. Well, him that's the perception, give, yeah. right, Jimmy? Mm. And I mean, he is a natural halfback. And if you talk about Parramatta at the moment, probably got their lack with no Mitch is a a natural halfback who can lead that steer that team around. Because who did Dylan's play this week. Blaze Talangi is not a no, well, player last play? week. No, who do, who they who, playing this who week? They play because Blaze Talangi is not a talker. Good player, not a talker, and and um, Dylan Brown's not really a natural halfback. Yeah. Titans could be so, they're playing Titans this week. Could be Cowboys. a good. Or they're playing the Cowboys this week. Cowboys. I think they need. I think Para needs to change something. Well, Are they yeah. going to be in a South situation in six weeks' time? With the or coach? is it too early to say? 
No, just the, in general, like everyone questioning where, where we're all headed with this thing. With the, with the coach. With, Pat, with well, the coach, they with did, everything. They, with they're they're playing, they didn't, been, no, they didn't make the eight last year. It's been a no. fall from grace from the grand yeah, final. They, they didn't make the eight last year. Mm. They've struggled this year. Obviously, Moses is, is long term. And, you know, we, we speak about, okay. The, he's the, under pressure. He's, he's no under pressure, he's under and pressure. it's and it's and time it's time sensitive, right? Because it's like, yeah. well, do we do we pull the pull the pin now, and then we can we wear first dibs on who, Wayne, whoever coaches are out there, or well, do we wait? That squad would seem right for Wayne. Again, the experienced squad, a lot of old heads. Wayne's really good with those sort of guys. Um, they would seem ready made. They never got Wayne. the hang of it after Reed Marnie left. No. Have they? So has someone from Parramatta reached out on behalf of Wayne to you? Well, there was that rumour going around pre-season that someone had reached out to Wayne. Well, that's what you said before. He's got people that reach out. <laughs> yeah, just, just not wondering. to me, mate. Oh, no, okay. not to me. To clubs. That's right. And Parramatta Do you just... Wayne just plays Sweet Caroline all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Reaching out. That's and, actually uh, a big song at the uh, oh, game. Oh, trash means. Parramatta <laughs> distanced himself from Wayne the pre-season. We should make that very clear. Yeah, but... well, of course, because they got Brad yeah. Arthur there. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, we're going to deny those reports, Brent Reid. <laughs> no. But Brad's, uh, I think it's pretty, uh, I think we can all assume that Brad's under a bit of pressure in yeah. the next seven weeks. You'd hate to be a coach, wouldn't you? It's quite, yeah, the, right. predicament. <laughs> it, good money. It's quite the predicament for, for, for Brad Arthur and the Eels to be in with this young kid. And yeah. obviously, with the, in all likelihood, he, he's going to move down to the Raiders. But then do they give him the advantage and the Raiders the advantage of blooding him now? But they need results now. So. Yeah. It's a difficult one, but the, you know, I would have thought he's going to go close to getting picked this week, given the way their halves have sort of played the last couple of weeks. Uh, another kid who's going to make his debut this week, Jai Gray, the young South oh, fullback, um, fullback oh, nice. with Latrell out. Looks like he'll definitely play this week, Jai Gray. So the exact difference in terms of when you look at him to Latrell Mitchell. He's Luttrell all is energy, big, yeah. imposing fella. He's a mid. He's, he's a little fella. Little fella. He, 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 he he you, were gonna, you were going to say something yeah, then, really. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great U10. Yeah. Great he's U10. Got well Campbell's got Preston Campbell's body shape. Yes. Let me say that. Yes. He's actually a half. I saw him play the uh, uh, schoolboy title, national schoolboy titles two years ago. Mm. He's a halfback. He's a half 5'8". But he's played fullback for South. He's been outstanding in New South Wales the last couple of weeks. And he'll get his chance this week. So a lot of people look excited. good in charity shield. A lot of people excited like about him. seeing him play. And the other bloke who looks like he's going to come back this week is Nelson Sofa Solomon because he didn't get charged. Oh, um, he didn't get charged. No, he didn't get charged over those incidents on the weekend. Um, he's played two games in New South Wales Cup the last couple of weeks. Been a lot of talk about his future and whether he's got a, a future in Melbourne because um, he fall he was on the outer a bit in the off season. Uh, but it looks like he'll get his chance this week to show that he's got a future in Melbourne. That's weird because it was such a, oh, not a rigmarole, but, you know, it was a story about whether or not he was going to stay yeah, or go leave. or whatever like that. He but then leave. the off-season led to believe they weren't too impressed with the no. shape he came back in. No. No. And I think they got himself a bit, into. I think they were a bit disappointed with the shape he was in all last right. season. Okay. Then uh, he had some injury problems in the in the off-season. Um, He's just a big didn't boy. Didn't really meet expectations. He's one of those blokes who can change a game like this, really. They yeah. wouldn't like 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 let go of him. Like him. What's he? What's he like to tackle? Oh, he's he's one of the hardest. Like he's so the us. You mean like you come against blokes who play first grade? You know we all do weights. We're all pretty strong. We can, you can tackle blokes. He he's that hard to tackle one on one. Like physically, he's just so big. You look at his legs, mate. When he's fresh, it's, it, oh, it's and they it's sometimes hard. bring him off the bench, mate. Oh. Speaking of big blokes, Ben Tiakura. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> see, all he did mate, was bend down. He scored. <laughs> Try on his debut. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're Billy Walters, what about Wisha? Uh, uh, Wisha uh, uh, <laughs> smoothie like. That you use that play, like yeah, and yeah. that that's going to be a, a a big thing for for Brisbane these yep. next couple of years. Use him, and then bang, you got. You, so if you think about it, if you're defending against Brisbane, you got to worry about that big bloke on on, on try line. Mm. Think about the space that opens up for Walsh and Mam. Yeah, yeah, like and Stags because they, they do so, don't they? That it's teams would rather defend on their try yeah. line than their twenty. But well, that you, negates that. Well, you surely. need about five players to mark up on him. Yeah, so you got to be super tight. It's going to be, and if you don't go super tight, you play to him. If you if you go super tight, then Walsh and Mam explode. It's like that video from Japan a couple of years ago with those hundred kids playing against the three professional soccer players, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to get the ball it, off. Or, or, so trying to did you play Jonah Lomu rugby? Yep. Like, yes. and there was that uh, cheat. <laughs> yeah, there was, no, you could yeah. you you could enact the cheat code on your on your um, fifteen Jonah Lomu. Uh, it was the special team. On the memory card, you could get them on. And this guy had just, he was untackleable. It's like 
again. <laughs> you, you know what I'm looking forward to with him, Jimmy? I hope he holds his spot in first grade. Because when they play the West Tigers, if you remember, in the New South Wales Queens, Queens and State of Origin under 19 game, Ben Takura and Samuel Afanu yes. went at it. Over oh, did they? Because Ben Takura sledged him over his brother's <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. being in the big house. And they went at it, and then Samuel confront, Samuel confronted them after the game. When and they we played, saw when the Brisbane the, Tigers We saw Samuel on the weekend. He was going at it with some dude in the crowd, wanted to fight some guy in the crowd. Mm. Apparently that had to calm him down the dressing sheds. So if he and Ben Zakura face each other, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, wow. That could be something, a sight to behold. And Even just quickly, last one, Freddie Lussick, mm. who uh, was that sent was off for that um, charge down that broke. Uh, Lachlan Elias' leg on the weekend. He's been referred straight to the judiciary. So it be. could be a little... Stint the sidelines. Oh, so it's not been graded. No, it's actually no. like, yep. oh, yep. see, you, see you Tuesday night. <clears throat> uh, gentlemen, see you next Monday, but uh, not next Tuesday. Hopefully see JD's next still got a job next well, Monday we'll when see. we speak. Brent Reed, thank you. No, you don't. Woodsy, thank Good you. Man, thank you, guys. Jimmy, thank you. Cheers. Have a great week, everyone.